Hey, it's Patrick Brewer here from Brewer Consulting. I was approached by one of my financial advisor consulting clients the other day, and he wanted to know the best way to build a virtual practice, a practice in which he could work with 100 to 200 clients from his laptop, have complete control over his time, his energy, and his schedule. So I wanted to talk to you guys about that because I feel like there's three ways to do it. The industry really has pushed one way, which I think gives you the least amount of leverage, and I'm gonna show you why, but there's really three ways to do this to have complete time freedom. And ultimately, that's what you should be looking for as an entrepreneur, as a financial advisor, is to operate in a way that leverages your unique purpose. So let's walk through those three ways now and see if we get some clarity around it. The first way is what the industry has told us is kind of the primary way to build a virtual practice, and that's to work on an industry-specific niche. So that would be doctors, dentists, lawyers, owners of construction companies, etc. Maintain a national focus. So you're working with people all around the country, and then you're helping them solve a particular problem or a pain in their life. So the way that this would play out is you work with younger dentists, you help them uh, solve problems with their student loans all around the country. And when you solve that problem around student loan planning, it allows you to build trust through execution, so now you can deliver more holistic advice on investments and financial planning. And this is, this is a great way to operate. You can absolutely build a practice this way. The problem is that you lose the human connection. And right now, that is our unique advantage as a financial advisor. Every profession is becoming more virtual. There's all these apps, there's all this information and noise, and people have no idea what they're doing. I mean, people are enrolling on Betterment, they're using Robinhood, they've got a Vanguard account, they've got a Roth IRA, a Chase, they feel like they're doing the right thing, but they're actually doing so much wrong because they have too much access. So what we get to do as financial advisors is sit across the table from them as a human being and acknowledge that problem and build a relationship. It's harder to do that on video conference. I'm sorry, it is. So you're gonna have less opportunity to build a practice quickly if you operate in this model, but you can absolutely do it. We do it in one of our businesses, it's called SurePath Physician Services, and we've operated with a good amount of success building trust nationally with a specific industry. Uh, but I wanna to talk to you about two other ways that might be easier, especially if you run an established practice right now. So the second way that you can do this is to maintain a local focus. Uh, so I live in Austin, Texas, so 30 miles around the you know, center of Austin. Solve a, a specific problem for somebody, social security planning, retirement income planning, cash flow planning for young couples. You would be the one that solves the problem, but you would set expectations. So what I mean by that is when you get in front of the client, you get to, wow, one of my lights just went out, you can't predict that. <laughs> you get to solve a problem for them, one-on-one, -on -one, in person, and after you've solved that problem, you start to set expectations around the service delivery. You mentioned that there's a lot of traffic in Austin and don't, do they enjoy driving around in traffic? They're gonna say no, right? So you just set the expectation that all future meetings are gonna be done virtually. Great, now you have already established that trust with them, you've built the human relationship and you've set the expectation that all subsequent meetings will be done via video conference. You've effectively created your virtual practice but you're operating locally and you're giving people what they need which is that relational connection that our profession offers. So that's, that's the second way to do it. The challenge with that is you're still not building leverage, you're the one doing the sales, the client service, the operations, the technology, the marketing strategy. So I wanna to talk to you about the third way, and this is what we're doing in SurePath Wealth Management in my RIA. We're gonna maintain a local focus. We're gonna solve a particular set of problems for people. So we've got multiple online marketing funnels that are going on LinkedIn, Facebook, Google AdWords, different strategies to get in front of people, get our unique message out there to become relevant to them, help them illuminate a problem and then help them solve it and build trust. Uh, the problems that we're focused on are taxes for business owners, um, social security and cash flow planning for young, uh, young families, but we switch those up from time to time. And the third part is the most important part. It's the idea of creating leverage, creating leverage in your business. So what does that mean? Well, most advisors, what they do is they become the primary salesperson, the face of the firm, the relationship manager, the financial planner, the marketing strategist. They're wearing too many hats because they don't know how to delegate. They don't know how to let go of control. So the first thing that you need to do before you do any of this is take stock in what you're actually good at. And I know that's hard to do because as entrepreneurs, we're driven on momentum. We feel like we can do everything better than everyone else. But if you fail enough times, you start to realize what you're uniquely positioned to do. So really take stock and figure out what are you good at? Are you the relationship manager? Are you the rainmaker? Are you the marketing strategist that drives leads? Like what are you uniquely positioned to do? Once you figure that out, you start to get people that come in 
and can provide leverage because they can do the other things that you don't have the time or the energy to do. This expands the pie, so you're gonna need to incentivize these people and create equity incentives and other structures so that they're gonna work hard and you're gonna get talented people. But ultimately what this is gonna deliver is you operating at your highest and best use, your leveraged purpose, other people doing the things that you don't enjoy doing, and now you're working from your laptop. You have full control over your time, your energy, your schedule. You can do whatever you want. You can travel, you can spend time with family, you can work with hobbies, on hobbies, um, because you're doing everything that you want in your business. Is this the easy way out? No, because it requires you to be honest with yourself and to build a practice that's actually gonna create enterprise value. It requires a, le a level of honesty and commitment. So I hope that was helpful. Those are the three ways I think you can go about building a virtual practice and really, the, the choice that you make is gonna be up to you and what you wanna build. So I think the first step is becoming really, really honest about what you're good at and where you wanna take your business. So I hope that was helpful and take care.